There you go. How's that? Hi, good morning, and welcome back to the Kristen Omdahl Show. This is episode 1167, and we are live in Southwest Studio in, uh, we're live in Southwest Florida in my studio with baby Bjorn this morning. He got in a little trouble this morning outside. Not trouble with me, got in his own little trouble. Uh, oh, quit rubbing the tripod. Please stop rubbing the tripod. <laughs> if you're joining me live, please say hello. Let me know if you're crafting this morning. Let me know if you have questions for me. Hi, Joan. Hi, Joe. Hi, uh, Sharon and Judy. Good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good day so far. Happy Tuesday. Oh, looks like my wall art is twisted. Let me fix that. Let's fix this, baby Bjorn. That's better. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah, I'm coming back to play with you. Don't worry. Hi, Judy. Good morning. Hi, Jody. Hello to everybody I might have missed. Or if you haven't said hello, hello to you as well. Happy you could be here. Whether you feel like chatting or not or uh, joining the live chat, I'm still glad you could be here. Hi, Debbie. Good morning. So did everybody like the beach walk yesterday? That was... Exciting, bittersweet, but also very exciting to be back there. Hi, Jody and Steffi. Good morning. Is it spanky time? Okay. You want spankies? So today uh, we're going to talk about, I look, what? Marvy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't know that word. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was a great beach walk. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to renew my beach pass because they have no facilities there whatsoever. So I have to do that online. And I'd really rather not pay every day when I can just get a beach pass that will be good for the whole year. So uh, I have to do that online today. And I'm sure it'll take a few days for my beach pass to get here. But it doesn't make sense to me to pay $8 every day to go when I can spend $60 and get an annual pass. So I'd rather work on that first than go back every day. And I don't plan on going every day. I'd like to go a couple days a week. That would be my goal. But um, anyway, that's why we're not there today. And besides, we got to gotta hang out with baby Bjorn on the show once in a while, too. I do like to alternate beach uh, with studio days for a couple of reasons. Number one, I like to share baby Bjorn with all of you. And number two, it's great for doing more educational stuff here. It's fun to show things and show styling and all that stuff uh, at the beach, but it is not, uh, it's not a great place to do anything educational. It's much easier to teach or talk about techniques here in the studio. So that's my thought process on it. You're welcome to share your opinion. What's your opinion? You want me here all the time, don't you? Yeah, I think you'd rather if I was here all the time. I appreciate it, sweetheart. Thank you. I love you. That's a good boy. Oh, that's a good baby. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, Zita. Zita? Yeah. Greetings from Hungary. Wonderful. Hi, Marlene. Good morning. All right, so I was peeking through uh, as I was setting up this morning. I did see some of the live chat and that there were questions about the sprout chain shawlette, which, uh, like I mentioned yesterday, is a pattern that was originally released in one of my books. And as my books come out of print, I would really love to re-release all of those patterns with updated charts, updated written instructions, uh, and updated yarn options. You know, I've been writing books since... When did my first book come out, Baby Bjorn? 2008? So what would that be? 15, I've been writing books for 15 years. A lot of the yarns. Oh, thank you so much, Donna. Thank you. I appreciate it so, so, so much. Um, hi, Toasty Mornings. So over, over the last 15 years, there are lots and lots of yarns that have been discontinued, not just my own. And so it would be really great to re-release all of those patterns. If you think about it, I've published, I've designed and published 980 some patterns as far as my Ravelry account goes, but there's 400 patterns on my website. So if you think about it, majority of those other patterns are uh, patterns from my 
books from before I became a self-published author when I worked with other publishing companies. So all of those all of those patterns should in time revert back to me. A lot of them have already. I just haven't gotten around to re-releasing them. So Sprout Chain Shawlette is one of those examples. It's a shawl that was originally done in a yarn that has long been since discontinued. In fact, if anybody, if any of you remember Jennifer Hansen of Stitch Diva Studios, uh, she had a yarn line while she was selling patterns many, many years ago, and it was a silk blend yarn, I believe, and uh, I had used her silk blend yarn in the origin, original version of that shawl, and it was a very thin yarn, and I used a very small hook, and so it was a much finer gauge, and I made it uh, a shawlette size. It was very small, and so <clears throat> as I was wanting to re-release it, currently I thought it would be interesting to do it in a much larger gauge and make a much larger shawl and so I also thought that because each of the increase sections could be used as a visual in the video tutorial to help supplement reading the pattern I decided to do each repeat in a different color and I thought well that makes it a great stash buster then so then I thought, well, what yarn do I have left over from a previous project that would be great for a stash buster and the right yardage and, you know, all that stuff. So I decided to go with um, Friends Cotton 8.8 by Hobie Yarns because I had leftover yarn from their No Shades of Grey challenge when I did the Amore Crochet Cowl. And so I ended up having the right amount of yarn, uh, except... There was one thing that I had to do a little bit differently, and that was when it came time for the edging. You know, when you do top-down increasing, the color up here, you use a lot less yardage than the color down here, right? And so I was pretty close to getting to do the edging in um, the ninth color of the yarn, but I just didn't have enough. So what I did was I deconstructed the floral fringe edging to just include the chain and the loop the loop being where you would put the petals. I did all of that in the one color and then used the leftovers of all nine colors to literally crochet the flowers onto the rings of the of the uh, edging. And it worked out well. And so it ended up being, you know, quite a, a, quite a significant modification because now all the flower fringe is multicolored. Judy's sharing a link to all of this. So if you want to see what I'm talking about in the photos, you can. Uh, so if you run out of yarn, you can do something like that. Or if you want that to be a style uh, aesthetic. Um, oh, what am I wearing right now? I'm wearing a black maxi dress and a, uh, a lace kimono uh, top over the top of it. Hi, Lori. Does that make sense what I'm talking about? If you can... If you can share colors of yarn on that last row of your edging, it does allow you to have it does allow you to have options when it comes to yarn chicken. Oh, you're gonna sit in my lap, baby. You are such a sweetheart. Yeah, that's my baby. Does that make sense? Uh, no, the pattern is not different in the book than it is in the uh, in the PDF download. Not true. It is not true. It is very similar pattern like I said I changed the hook size I changed the yarn weight and I, like I said I did do a slight modification to the edging because I ran out of yarn uh, but other than that no it is the same concept the same type of increasing uh, the rest of it is the same so if you have the book great if you don't have the book now you can have the pattern um, <clears throat> I like it with the different colored flowers too and uh, I did not share that in the original tutorial video because the first video was really to show you how to do the increases. And as I was making it, I was like, this would make a great yoke for a pullover or a cardigan too, don't you think? Uh, but yeah, there will be a second video for the flower fringe edging with the options of either doing them all in one color or doing them in separate colors. I will be showing both of that, both of those options, because I think they're both valid options as well. Yeah, it's different with the crochet, different colored crochet flowers. Obviously, that means two ends to weave in for each flower. But my goodness, once once you know how to weave in ends, sometimes it's just the nature of the beast. If you want multicolored things, guess what? You're going to have a lot of ends to weave in. And if you've got something else to distract your mind, it can be a really easy, uh, thoughtless Zen project to do, too. 
I don't mind weaving in ends uh, when I set my mind to it. Oh, you sweetheart. Look at this baby. How can you not hold a baby that wants to be held like a baby, right? But anyway, I only am bringing that up because I saw a little comment in the pre-chat. I actually have a whole different subject to talk to you about today. And starting with, does anybody here know what a pie shawl is? Has anybody here ever heard of a pie shawl? P-I, not P-I-E. As in 3.14. Has anybody heard of that math term in uh, shawl construction before? Yeah, scrap yarn, having scrap projects is always a good idea. Stash busters are awesome, and so sprout chain shawlette. You could do it in a much thicker yarn that I did and make a bigger, cozier shawl, um, and it, you would still follow the same exact instructions. Uh, oh, Jerry remembers me from Knitting Daily TV. That's awesome. That is, so that was the first show that I was on. Uh, I was, the, I was the crochet, the crochet corner. Is that what they called my segments? Anyway, uh, I did evolve into being a knit and crochet designer, a teacher on the show. But yeah, I was on Knitting Daily TV for ten seasons uh, before I started working on knit and crochet. Now, both shows have been discontinued. As of this year, uh, I did hear that Knit and Crochet Now is not coming back. Now, I want to say I was on there for five seasons, four or five seasons. Yes, that's what I just said, Lori. You can do the sprout chain shawlette in any weight yarn. Yes, you could do it in cobweb lace weight and just do more repeats of the increasing pattern. You would obviously need more rows because it would be much finer gait. Or you could use super bulky yarn and a big hook and, and do it in an hour. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so many people have heard of the term pie shawl. So, you may think, oh gosh, geometry, circles, pi, 3.14, how in the world does that apply to knitting and crochet? It's not as scary as it sounds. What it has to, what it, how pi is involved in shawls, it works for either a half circle shawl or a full circle shawl, but it's a lot easier than it sounds. What it, what it ends up being construction wise is counting the number of rows or rounds you work even in pattern before the next increase. And you're always doing the increases 100% increase across the row. So let me give you an example. If you started with 10 stitches for your first row, you would double your stitch count on the next row to make it 20. Then you would work one row even in pattern. Then you would do another double increase row, and then after that, what's double one? You would do two rows even in pattern before doing your next increase row. Then you would double your, so then we'd be up to 40, right? We doubled the first row, then we did one row even, then we doubled the next row for 40, and then we do two rows even. Then you would double your stitch count again to 80, and then work four rows even in pattern. Do you see where I'm going with this? Then you would double your stitch count again to 160, let's say, and then you would do eight rows even in pattern. So the number of rows you work even in pattern between your full 100% increase rows doubles each time. So the first break between increases is one row. The next break between increases is two rows. The next break between increases is four rows. The next break between increases is eight rows. The next break between increases is 16 rows. Does that make sense? So each time you're doing that 100% increase, you're doubling your stitch count, and then you're working even in rows, and the space of the even in rows doubles each time. Oh, yeah, I forget to charge my devices overnight too, and it's so weird because I know I do a show in the morning and occasionally I forget to charge my stuff. So silly. Okay, uh, no, the, the last season of Knit and Crochet Now has already been released. There will not be any more seasons coming out. The last season is out. Was it season 13, maybe? Maybe someone can confirm that. Uh, okay, so does everybody understand the concept, oh, conceptually anyway, of a pie shawl? You're doing the de you're doing the increase. You're d always doubling your stitches on the increase rows, but then there is a space 
that grows in between each increase row. And this is based on pi. But that's the concept of how it works. Hi, Carrie. So, would you like to see one? <laughs> and so, okay, I'm seeing some yeses, so I think we'll move on from there. So the next thing I wanted to show you is that I've been, this is a pattern that I believe is unpublished. I don't believe I ever published this pattern, but it is a, it is a form of a pie shawl, but you know I've got to take it a step further, right? And so I'm doing a pie shawl in pattern, meaning it is a three row repeat, not a one row repeat, but every time I do that increase row that doubles my stitch, stitch count, I do a repeat of my three row stitch pattern according to how much needs to be done. So here's the shawl so far, it's not done. And so it's a three row repeat of single crochet through the back loop only two times, and then one row of double treble crochet through the back loop only. So it's a three row repeat, and this pattern will be coming out soon. I'm just showing it to you conceptually this morning so we can talk about pie shawls. So there was one repeat uh, even in pattern after the, the first increase, then two repeats of the pattern uh, after the next increase, then four repeats of the pattern after the, the next increase. And so at this point, I've been on the fence about what to do for the edging, and I've thought about going to the store and getting some ribbons and some feathers and doing something alternative for fringe, but, and then maybe adding some crochet dangles like portions of fringe and portions of dangly edgings in it. But I'm wondering if that will get too heavy and also wondering if it just won't be practical for washing. Even though it looked great for a photo shoot, you know, it's really important to me that I design things that are practical for you, not just things that are fun for a photo shoot for me. So I do like the idea of just doing a real edging uh, like with crochet and yarn, not all those other pieces for this. I feel like I want to do the concept I'm having with feathers and ribbons and stuff might be a better application for a mandala than for a shawl, but I'm throwing it out there today. If that's what you'd rather see, that's fine. Oh, Lori, thank you so much. Thank you. So then the other part of that is that we could open our Crochet Power 2 edgings book and talk about the different types of edgings that are our are, are our options with the stitch count at the end of my last row here so i'm on my last row of the shawl right now and my stitch count is 160 stitches and depending on whether i whether or not i pick an edging that grows and flares then i don't have to add any more increases because the, the edging itself will do that however if i pick an edging that works pretty straight, I will have to add increases before I can add the edging to it. Um, thanks, Lori. Yeah, so I have the edging book already open this morning, and as I've been looking through it, I've been thinking about the math, and, and I want you to be able, I want to show you in practical use how to use your book too, right? So at, I'm using my book right now. <laughs> Uh-oh, it went away. What happened? My computer's acting very strange today. It's funny, I took an online proctored exam last week where um, there's a place called Proctor U. I had to take an, I had to take an exam um, online and had to be monitored by people at this university, so I had to give them permission to use my computer. My computer has not been the same ever since. It's been glitchy and it's scaring, scaring me because I really don't need to be buying another computer right now. Okay, so the, because this shawl is already top down, I'm going to skip the first chapter of bottom up edgings. I don't think that's the direction that I want to go with this. Then the next option would be to look at the dangles and fringe construction edging, which is my concern with this is that I'm already using DK weight cotton yarn and that's going to be on the heavier side of things and doing a fringe edging I believe would be quite heavy. Beautiful though like a floral fringe like we did on the sprout chain shawl that would be gorgeous and even these this pansy edging I think that would be really gorgeous at the edge of this shawl and these would be super easy to uh, modify because they have an easy stitch count Okay. 
and the floral fringe, the dragonfly, I mean, uh, the foundation oval fringe, even the adenesia, which has like those spades. These would all be really gorgeous fringes to put on uh, that shawl. The star, the Stella with the stars, be gorgeous on the edge of that shawl. Uh, even a twisted fringe would be gorgeous on the edge of that shawl. So all of those would be great candidates. And if you're totally in love with those, I mean, you know, I am definitely open to um, suggestions. But even a side to side edging would be great and something that so it end up looking like this on the side of the shawl. But that's a side to side edging. So cascade would be a good candidate. Let me show you some more. The violet, I think, would be a good candidate because it would give us a nice scalloped edge. It would look like that on the edge. I think that would be pretty. And these, and the side-to-side -side edgings, don't really require a stitch count. Uh, they'd be pretty easy to figure to be able to fill, um, ease in. What I wanted to get to was the top-down construction so that I can show you what we would do to ease them in. Although this, the pint, this gladiolus is a pineapple edging, I think that would be really pretty. But it might not be the right aesthetic for this shawl anyway. But wouldn't that be pretty? I want to do that edging on something anyway. But um, I did do it on the, the sweater on the cover of Crochet So Fine has that edging on it. All right, so let me keep moving here and get to the serpentine edging would be very cool too. The shimmer edging would be cool. But let me show you what I was looking at because I want to show you the math on it anyway. These are the one and two row repeats. I want something more substantial than that. Some sunflower would be pretty though. I think straight up double crochet ruffles would be a little heavy for this project, so I'm not going to consider those. But Giada is something that I was considering. So look at this one. This is, let me tell you how many rows it is. It's 11 rows and it's a multiple of 18 stitches plus one. Okay, but see, I, but because it flares so much at the end of 160 stitches, which is where I'm at on the shawl, I would not need to do any more increases to get set up for this edging. And I'm going to tell you why I'm saying that when I show you another one that is a different, that has a different type of a concept. So to, so I'm at 180 stitches right now, 160 stitches right now. So 160 divided by 18 is eight and change. So eight so if we do eight times 18, no, nine times 18, Ugh, hold on. <laughs> eight times 18, 140, okay, nine times 18. Okay, so we have 160 stitches. To do a multiple of 18 stitches plus one, it would be nine repeats times 18 for 162 plus the one, 163. Well, if we're already at 160 stitches, increasing three stitches across the row to, if, increasing three stitches across the row to get 163 would be very easy to do. Yep, here's the shawl so far. It's more of a half circle. And so one of the edging options, I'm almost done with the last row, and one of the options I'm talking about is adding the Giada crochet shawl, crochet edging stitch pattern to the edge of this shawl. So I'm talking about the fact that to get a multi, so we're at 160 stitches to make it work for to make it work for 18, a multiple of 18 plus one, it would be 18 times nine, 162 plus one, 163 from 160 would be increasing my stitch count by three to make this work. Uh, someone's recommending another edging and, I, and I'm gonna talk about a couple because there are a couple that I'm interested in doing for this. So infinite is another one that I thought would be interesting to do because then it still gives me a little bit of that floral, uh, a little bit of that fringe look that I like, that I am liking right now. So now this stitch pattern is a multiple of 10 stitches plus one. And as you can see, it does create some fullness across that row too. So I don't think that I would need to do any significant increases across that row. However, <laughs> however, I kind of want to 
which there's a couple of ways that I could do this. The, what makes this a multiple of 10 stitches plus one is the amount of stitches you skip between the five double crochet sections and the single crochets on that first row of the edging. So if I wanted to modify this and instead of saying how many skipping five stitches, what is it? Skipping four or five? Whatever, however many st stitches you're skipping on that first row, if you skipped less stitches, that would give you more fullness and a shorter repeat. So it might bring it down to a multiple of eight or a multiple of six. And if it does that, then it adjusts, then you figure out how many stitches that you would skip to make it a little more full. I'll do the math on that if I choose this edging, but that's one of the things that I'm considering. Then another one would be this one, the Jordana might be interesting, but as you can see, this offers no fullness whatsoever. So for this one, I would want to increase my stitch count. Maybe not a full double stitch count going from 160 to 320 stitches, but maybe increasing uh, a 50% increase and increasing in every other stitch. So instead of going from 160 to 320, maybe going from 160 to 240, and then figuring out the multiple of 16 plus one. Because you'll want some, this is how many rows? A four row repeat. You're gonna want some amount of increase. Otherwise, it's just gonna be straight like a wall, and that's not what you want in an edging. So notice, that's why it's important to pay attention to these photos too. The edgings that naturally flare you don't need to accommodate edging or uh, increases for them. But if they don't flare already, then you do. So like, for example, the Hadley edging, see how much that one flares? You would not need to add any increases before starting this edging. It will create its own volume roughly flare. That's a multiple of 15 plus 13. I think that one's a little too much for what I want to do. This is still a simple shawl, so I think it requires a somewhat simple edging, not a full, like, this is way too much edging for this shawl, in my opinion. I don't want to go that elaborate. But I'll show you a couple more. I thought there was one. I think there's one. At Aveline would be beautiful. This is a multiple of 30 stitches plus three. And notice there's no fullness there. So you would want to add fullness before starting an edging like that at the bottom of a shawl. This is another one that I thought looked really pretty. The number 92 live is a multiple of 10 stitches plus one. Really pretty stitch pattern, but it offers no fullness. Look at how straight that lies from the last row of the project. That's why I always did these edgings in two colors. It was so that you could see whatever edge you're adding this edging to, you could compare the fullness of each one to see how much fullness the edging creates. Isn't that a great benefit? Because there are there's a time and a place when you want something to add fullness or you don't. And uh, you know, if you're adding a sleeve cuff, you don't wanna add fullness. Well, sometimes you might, but generally speaking, you might not. Putting an edging on an afghan, you may not wanna always add fullness or add a ruffle. So it's good to know when a stitch pattern does that and when it doesn't do that. All right, I think I showed you all the, was there something else you wanted me to talk about in here? Is there any edging you wanted me to discuss, figure out the math for? Does everybody understand what I'm talking about? Does anybody have a favorite of what I've talked about? Which one of these, even Jordana would be interesting. It's not a fullness one though, it's a straight one. So you would wanna add fullness before starting an edging like that. And then it's four rows really pretty that would be really pretty so my the ones i'm thinking of doing are the infinite number 76 uh i forget what else now oh the giada number 73 although that might be too much even the 72 candy is pretty i would like something a little scalloped even the sunflower is pretty but it's a little more advanced, and because this is such a simple shawl, it makes sense to me to make the edging simple, too, to um, appeal to people more universally. It's like when I make a shawl a little more intricate or advanced, I feel like it, it, I don't, it makes sense to make the edging the same way. If you're making a shawl that's super, super simple to appeal to people of all skill levels, it doesn't make sense to put an edging that would turn people away then. If you're going to do something simple, I feel like it, the whole thing should be simple. Although, 
Sometimes I have an argument against that too. <laughs> what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Sleepy baby. Here, but nobody can see you down there. Let mama rock you so everybody can see you too. Hi. Hi. Does anybody have any questions, recommendations? What do, would you like to see out of the book? What would you like to see me work the math on? Yeah, simple with simple makes sense. That's why I think that infinity one that has the faux fringe on it, the uh, crochet chain fringe in, a, in, in in edging pattern, I think that one might be the winner. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts too. I know, I've got to rock the baby kitty when he lets me. It's so good for me, it's so good for my heart and soul to get to rock him when he wants to. Oh, I miss rocking baby days. Thank you, Zeta. Oh, you have two kitties too, that's nice. I used to have two kitties too, but now I have one. Rest in peace, Becker Boo Boo. Right? Oh my goodness, I think he could fall asleep. Yeah, he's definitely my therapy cat, no question. My emotional support cat. Yes, I would definitely call Baby Bjorn my emotional support cat. <laughs> Sweet baby. Uh, yeah, I agree. I love all of the big elaborate edgings in the book, but there's a time and a place for everything, and I do believe that some of the bigger ones will overwhelm the shawl. I'd like to find something that... But that's the fun of being able to have an edging book that's organized like that. How fun was it to go through there and shop the different edgings for different reasons and different applications and see and all the information is there to decide are you going to need fullness added first does fullness already naturally occur in this edging is the stitch multiple going to work do i have to adjust my stitch count to make the multiple work what does it look like does it does the aesthetic of that edging match the aesthetic of what i want to add it to having the book laid out the way it does really makes it easy to use for any type of a project and so anytime I'm doing that I think it's a really great um, opportunity to show you how to work it in real time I'm using the book same way I'm encouraging you to use the book it is my reference tool now just like it's your reference tool and so anytime I can show you how I use it I do think it helps you to be able to use it better and get more value out of the book yourself just a quick reminder I do have um, all of my books available as ebooks for instant download on my website and and that's always always going to be uh, but right now i am discontinuing selling paperback books on my website and i do have a few copies left of crochet power and crochet power two edgings they're only ten dollars uh, i can autograph those for you if you like otherwise all my books are available on amazon uh, you know, prime shipping and all that good stuff too. So you can get paperback books all the time on Amazon. You can get these discounted books for a limited time on my website, and you can get the eBooks all the time on my website too. So if any of that appeals to you, you can find all of that on my website and on Amazon and all that good stuff. We'll put links in the video description as well. All right, any other questions? I do not have a tutorial ready for 1030 today, but I will have something out later today. It's taken me a little bit longer to edit the first video of the uh, Marlin Afghan. If there are other videos you'd like to see come out sooner than later, I do have plans to update to do that, a three-part series. I I'm going to finish the sprout chain shawl with an edging video and the Bali motif pullover. I've done the full motif so far. I want to do a video on the partial motifs as well. And then I do want to continue making those videos where I read the pattern and the chart as supplement to the videos and patterns to help you learn how to read patterns better too. So all of these patterns and any patterns that you want to see 
prioritized to be made in a how to read the pattern video, let me know in the comments today because I am taking your suggestions and prioritizing patterns to read them that way. I mean, there's over 400 patterns, so your priority is a good enough place for me to start, right? <laughs> oh, you go and sleepy bye. You don't want to say goodbye to everybody? Come here. All right. Well, Bjorn and I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes with us, don't we? Hmm? Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!